So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use and install this program called Tesmoda List, and it's, a, it's an extension for Frank and YAML, which I also wrote. It allows you to detect all your Tesmoda devices on your network and to sort through them, execute various commands in an easy fashion, has a reference that you can use. And so stay, stay tuned, and I'll show you how to use it and install it. So after you've installed the program, which I'll show you how to do later in this video, I mean, you should probably know whether or not you want to install it in the first place, uh, you basically will be able to have a web launch page here. So this is my local server, as you can hopefully tell by the private IP address there. And so this will take you to the Franken-YAML page. Franken-YAML is a totally separate program, and eventually, hopefully, I'll integrate the two, so that's why it's an extension. Anyway, you make it to the landing page here, and you have various settings. None of them are applicable to Tesmoda list. So let's click on our Tesmoda list, and it'll tell you the first step. The first step is to enter a login and password. Um, so you can have a blank login and password. So you just put this here. Um, and, you know, if your Desmoda devices don't have a login and password, then that should work. Um, I haven't tested it, but it will send a, a command without a particular login and password. But I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste my password in here. And what it does, is it sets a cookie uh, with your login and password in plain text on your own computer. If you don't trust it, you can just clear the cookie by hitting that button later. But if you don't trust your own computer, well, anyway, you might have bigger problems. Anyway, you get here and you click on default list. Oh, and there's no list set here. You have to actually scan some IPs. So you can either hit the IP scan range here or you can navigate to the scan page. It doesn't really matter. It takes you to the same place. And you can enter either directly a host name or IP address. Um, so... Uh, so, for instance, like, uh, I don't know if I can, nope, I don't have any of my host names memorized, but the short name, basically, to access your specific Tasmoda device, you can go directly to it. But I'm going to go ahead and enter a range. Now, on my network, I've put all my Tasmoda devices from 225 to 254. Wow, and it fills the whole spot. So, uh, yeah, I think I might have quite a few Tasmoda devices. So, I'm just going to get the last 9 or 10 here. So, uh, as you can see, I've got my prefix here. This is my private IP. P range is uh, uh, dot one. You probably don't want to have it do zero to 254 uh, unless you have a lot of resources on your server or client machine because it uses a lot of JavaScript and it'll make a lot of HTML. And so as you can see, it's loading up everything, uh, every single Tesmoda device that uh, I have on here. I have a, a ton of different ones. Um, evidently, these are offline. Actually, I think they're sitting in a box in the corners. So that would explain that. And so once I've done this, it actually automatically saves it into a list for later. So you actually do not need to scan these. And so what do I have? Uh, what was that? Eight. And so if I click on this default list here, I can look at the short version here. And look, it loads them right up. And so I can execute commands. And as you can see, the output of the commands goes here on the left. But maybe I want a little bit more, a few more options. And so... Either I can zoom in on the particular item, but let me show you a whole list of zoomed in items and you can navigate to all these all at once. Now, I'm not sure exactly why you'd want to view all this unless you want to crash your uh, you know, Chrome browser or something like that, but it does allow you to um, execute commands on the actual relays. Um, and so uh, you can select the individual relay and then uh, set it, uh, send a command from down there, or you can um, set it from here. And, and so for instance, if I want to find the pulse time of one, I can either click on this pulse time button here. Uh, just these buttons are uh, just time savers. You can always execute commands directly into this. Um, and if you don't know what a command does, you can actually type it in here. And before you actually can hit this execute button, you have to hit the reference button here anyway. Um, and so I tried to copy and paste most of the references for most of the commands, um, at least the ones I commonly use. Gosh, these set options, I can never remember. Um, and so um, so set option 19, let's just take a look and see what set option 19 does. And so, um, yeah, it, it dumps it right in there. And, um, also I can see what the individual options do. And so look, uh, set out, set out, setting option 19 to one apparently enables auto discovery in a home assistant. Oh, that's convenient. And so, um, I can execute this command on this particular, uh, Tesmoda device by just clicking execute. Actually, I think I'll do that. Um, is that going to break anything? Eh, why not? Let's find out. Anyway, and look, I just set it to on. Um, also, you notice this checkbox to the left, and that um, that is important because there is actually a way at the bottom of this page here to execute commands on every selected item, and that is how you select items.
So that's the basics of this program. It's pretty much, well, hopefully self-explanatory. Um, so I'm going to show you pretty much how to install it. Uh, so it's pretty simple, provided that you have a web server set up already. So if you have a Mac machine, I'm not going to show you how to do that. If you have a Linux machine, well, you probably know more about setting up web servers than I do. I, maybe? I don't know. Well, you can look that up. But I'm going to talk to you just about Windows. Uh, so that's the majority of what uh, what people use. So uh, as far as web servers, I just use this one, honestly. Uh, it's a free one called Abyss by Aprelium. Um, it has a paid version with um, some very good features as well. Um, but that's all you need. Um, just download it, install it. And then uh, on their website, you can just uh, Google this and I'll ex uh, include a link as well. Uh, you, it shows you how to install PHP. So once you've done both of these steps, all you do is um, uh, place the files in the web server folder um, so that way you can access them. And then voila, there you go. You, you uh, are able to access the, the program um, just by typing in your local IP address um, and then the appropriate subdirectory. So as far as different modifications you can do after the fact, I mean, you can execute, of course, any command uh, that your uh, Tesmoda can, um, uh, can use. Um, so you can look up um, all the different commands, of course, um, at, on the Tesmoda page. Let me see if I have it here, Tesmoda. Um, and so you can just click on uh, commands and type anything you want in. Um, but um, you can also um, change these buttons around and so you, for quick access. So obviously this is customized just for me. Um, so um, I have this uh, uh, series of uh, fix uh, commands um, to basically fix MQTT from the base settings, um, at least as far as I'm concerned, uh, fix. I, I, I followed Rob's guide from the hookup. And so I made these buttons, but you can make your own buttons by just opening up um, this file, I don't know if you can see that tiny font over there, it's the Z config file. The reason why it's titled Z is because these files automatically load in alphabetical order and that needs to load last. Uh, you didn't need to know that. Anyway, um, you go into this program uh, file and this is a bunch of gibberish. Don't mess up any of this uh, or your life will be painful. Um, you can modify. Um, I've had it so um, I have different MQTT servers on my network, and so I did a short name so that way I can read it a little bit easier. But if you leave this uh, MQTT host uh, array blank, uh, just by deleting that, then um, it will just show you the IP address instead of resolving it to that uh, name. So um, you can probably, even if you're not a coder, understand how this works. And so you have to put this a cm colon uh, prefix. It is case sensitive, but after that, it is not. You can type in any command you want or series of commands. So if I'm going to set option, uh, let's do 19 to 1 because I don't remember, you know, what anything else does. And then I wanted to, I don't know, power the first relay uh, on. Um, you just put the semicolon just like you would in a string of commands. It will automatically parse it. It will put that backlog command in there and all, everything like that. So the reason why I don't tend to send multiple commands at once is because, first of all, I can just make buttons for everything. So I can just hear, you know, for instance, one, two, three, four, five, um, like I do over there, um, is because if you try to send in multiple commands at once. So let me demonstrate how that works. So power one, one, power two, oops, I got a semicolon, power two, two, one, rather. Um, so the program will work. Um, it'll even insert that backlog command for you again. Um, we'll send references, um, but uh, once you execute the command, you get this warning backlog enabled. So, I'm sorry, warning you must enable backlog if uh, you want to know what's going on. So it will have received this command. Um, that's what it's uh, demonstrating here, but you don't know the result of that. So uh, you have some buttons over here and you have some stuff over here. Um, and so these are buttons with an associated result. So these are all basically buttons to query a state. Um, and so you can um, click on those buttons and it'll fill in the blanks over here. Uh, and so to modify those, those are verticals. So you can kind of identify that over here, all the way there. There we go. So you can put down different vertical commands. And so you could do um, I don't know if you really wanted to know what the pulse time for the first thing is. So you do pulse time one. Um, and then hopefully if I coded this right, it should just display. So see how it works. 
Oh, there we go. Okay, that didn't work. Anyway, you know what? Thinking about it, the reason why this didn't work is because pulls time without an E isn't a real command. I wonder if I actually make this command proper, if it'll work. Oh, let's just see. Right, let's reload the page here. Oh my goodness, it works. All right, so um, let's just see what it comes up with. All right, it outputted it over to um, this uh, this box over here because that's a that's a use command. But you get the idea. Um, basically, this is hopefully modifiable to your individual needs, just to quickly manage your particular set of buttons. Um, it also, once again, has this kind of uh, short list mode, and so you can quickly just execute commands uh, without loading a whole bunch of HTML and other JavaScript and stuff like that. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you get a lot of use from this program. Um, I hope that it measured up to the probably 100 plus hours it took to code it. And that's the end of this. So hopefully you enjoy it.